Screening and JBI summary can occur at two different levels. The first is screening at the title and abstract level. Title and abstract screening involve screening records that have been imported into summary following your search based only on their title and the information presented within the abstract. What we are trying to do at title and abstract screening is determine whether the full text should be retrieved to screen at the full text level. What we need to do is ask ourselves, do we include or exclude these records based on the relevance of the information presented in the abstract and the title? So in the example here, you can see I have imported 10 records into title and abstract screening, and they are classed as pending as I have not yet screened them. Please refer to the different video in this series that details the process of importing records into summary. I'm just going to click on the title and abstract box, which lists the imported records in alphabetical order by author. I'm going to include the first record, exclude the second, and include the third. All decisions that I have made will be listed under my decisions. Those records that still need to be screened will be under awaiting screening. And you may also notice that we have a conflicted tab and it says two. Conflicts will occur when the number of times a record needs to be screened is set at two. So in this example, a second user, which is this user called JBI summary, has made the opposite decisions to what I have made for these particular records. That means these records are conflicted. To resolve the conflict, the participant or participants allocated to manage conflicts can navigate to the conflicted tab and choose whether this record is going to be included or excluded at the title and abstract level. So for example, you can see that I have chosen to include this record and JBI summary has chosen to exclude it. I can make the final decision to include or exclude again based on relevance of the information presented in the abstract and the title to our inclusion and exclusion criteria. In these examples, I'm going to click include for both. The records will move out of conflicted and into resolved. The decisions will also be included under my decisions. Now, if I were to jump back to our screening overview tab, you will notice that the number of records that are now available to screen at the full text level is two. This is because we included these records at the title and abstract level. If you make a mistake at any time and want to change one of your decisions, you can do this by clicking my decisions and selecting revert my decision to the corresponding record. The record will then be sent back to the awaiting screening section to be screened again. If you have been allocated to resolve conflicts, you can revert the decision made and it will move back to the conflicted tab. Once a conflict has been resolved, however, the screeners who made the initial decisions that created the conflict cannot revert their decisions. Project owners and privileged authors are able to revert project level decisions. That is, records that have been included or excluded by selecting revert team decision. This means records will be moved back to awaiting screening and will be required to be screened again. If you want to see the progress of title and abstract screening at any time, simply go back to the screening page, which will list how many records have been screened and how many still need to be screened. It also lists the number of conflicted records and how many conflicts have been resolved. You are able to see how many decisions you have made under my decisions. You can also see the number of decisions other project members have made by hovering over the participants menu at the bottom of the screen.